August 9th, 2016 marked the one year anniversary of Darren Wilson's killing of Michael Brown in Ferguson, Missouri. As a standard operating procedure, when a killer happens to wear a police badge, Wilson has faced zero responsibility for his crime. Ferguson residents, if you decry the double standards that have been afforded to Wilson thus far, if you have sought a positive change through marches, rallies, petitions, videos, and other avenues, but have been ignored, and if you have yourself experienced firsthand the harassment and substandard service from Wilson and his colleagues, choose not to fund the Ferguson police outfit. Put your money where your mouth and your conscience is. Take a page from the war resistors, individuals who strive for peace and justice via nonviolent means. Many war resistors recognize the very real harm of democide and choose not to pay 45% of their federal income tax, which is the amount of the federal budget believed to advance the war machine. In Ferguson, the police budget accounts for 42% of annual expenditures. If you're a Ferguson resident unsatisfied with the protection offered by the police, then don't fund them. Withhold 42% of what you would otherwise pay in taxes. Choose not to furnish your oppressors with the means they require to oppress you, namely your consent and your wealth. The Ferguson Police Outfit's stated mission is to deter criminal activity and provide for the protection of life. Clearly they have fallen short, and in fact they've done the opposite. In spite of their failures, they've continued to grow in both size and scope, as all police outfits are incentivized to do. In absolute dollars, the budget of the Ferguson Police ratcheted up a whopping 12% between 2011 and 2014, from $4.7 million to $5.3 million. In addition to patrol functions, which include the salary of Wilson and his colleagues, Ferguson Police have recently spent the money stolen from their customers, quote unquote, on new vehicles, new handguns, new surveillance cameras, new laptops, salary increases, and renovation of their headquarters. Take note too that 20% of the operating budget of the corporation known as Ferguson comes from ransoms, extortion notes written for activities almost always lacking a victim. If you're targeted with such foolery, giving a speeding ticket or a red light ticket, don't automatically pay it. It'll only encourage them, as is evident by Ferguson's police promise of more aggressive code enforcement. This tactic, that of not funding self-proclaimed rulers, is rarely discussed, and for good reason. The voices on mainstream news, within bureaucracies, and among politicos purposefully keeps this option of defunding off the table entirely. Despite what they may say, they don't desire any real change to the structure of corrupt institutions upon which their own livelihoods depend. When you choose not to adopt the paradigm created and pushed by those folks, you'll naturally look for alternatives. You'll begin to think for yourself. The truth is that every police employee claims the right to steal money from their neighbors to tax them in order to provide a service. With such a foundation, it's little wonder that we get what we see. Only when each of us in Ferguson and in Oakland, Austin, Johannesburg, Jakarta, Madrid, and in every place around the globe chooses to strike the root will we finally be free of the institutionalized violence that took Michael Brown's life one year ago.